Welcome to Cactical Man, I appreciate you stopping by. Today dudes, we're taking a look at a pretty sweet budget knife by Civivi, the Backlash. Focus on this look at it. Here we go, the Civivi packaging, pretty standard white box packaging. Uh, I've seen a few videos where they don't label what's in it, this one does. You got the C80, C801A Backlash, it is labeled up there. You got their contact information and all that, Instagram, sales, and backside is blank. Standard packaging, right? You wouldn't really expect much more for a $42.50 budget flipper. But, when you pull it out, you get something that you don't even get with a $200 ET. Does this really matter to people? It matters to me. I, I really like these little, these little cases that's, I, you know, what does it cost? I, I don't know, probably 50 cents to make this. But it is just a nice little touch that even at a $42 knife, Civivi is throwing one of these in. Decent construction too, guys. Let's go ahead and open her on up. You got your knife in there. We're, we're going to set that aside. We're going to look at all the extras first. All the extras. Silica gel. You know, life's not good unless you have silica gel. You got your information. Um... Maintenance goes over maintenance warranty real quick. I don't know if that's gonna go in focus if it is pause it and try to read it If not try to read it now Can you read it? Can you read it? Can you read it? Can you read it? All right and Instructions before use right So it comes with that and then you also get an awesome little microfiber cloth $42 and 50 cents for this knife you get a pouch and a microfiber cloth and a silica gel packet, right? Because because that, that matters. Look at the cloth. All right, Civivi. Awesome. To me, that's that speaks excellence uh, at that price point for a budget knife. Absolutely. Inside, it's nice and plush. So if you do have a knife that has a nice finish or a nice, nice scales that have a nice finish instead of just G10, this pack, this pouch is perfect. Get it in there. Right? It's not the knife shaking around, that's the that thing, see? But to me, just the uh just the added bonus of getting this case is awesome. It doesn't have the pockets like the Kaiser pouches, but awesome sauce. Right, dudes? I I really enjoy the fact that it came with that and it came with a microfiber towel, because you can never have too many microfiber cloths. Right? Let's take a look at the knife. That's right, gents, an awesome budget pocket knife offering by Civivi, which is a uh, sister or daughter company of Wee Knife Company out of China. So yes, this is made in China. Uh, if that's something you're not okay with, you might as well not even watch the video because this knife is made in China. And guess what? It is awesome for a budget knife made in China. Now that made in China is out of the way, we're going to take a look at this awesome little budget 
flipper knife. Dudes, the price is coming in at $42.50 for this thing. That's, uh, that's pretty cheap for what you're getting. Look at this. And then we're just going to look at the action real quick. Look, 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 look. Oh. Flip you open. It's not so fall shutty, right? You do have to... Do have to give her some just because the uh, the blade isn't all that heavy, but it is very smooth. And uh, let's 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 do this real quick. Oh yeah, look at that. that detent though. All right, let's run over some specs real quick. One spec will be left out or unverified, and that is the actual weight. I still don't have a scale. Anybody got a scale they want to send me? Go ahead and do it. Your blade steel is a 9CR18MOV. And uh, if you're a blade snob, you're probably not going to like it. It is a Chinese steel, but it is better. Uh, it is one of the better Chinese steels in my research that I am finding the 9CR18MOV. It's actually adding a little bit more materials to it to make the edge uh, retention a little bit stronger, a little bit more beefier. It is a nice long drop point design, trying to get a good view in here so you guys aren't getting all reflected from the lizites, the lights, with a hollow grind on it, right? Overall length of this knife is 8.1 inches. I'll break out my little ruler, not that you're going to be able to see the numbers on it, but there you go, 8.1 inches. If you can see that, give it a thumbs up. If you can't see it, give it two thumbs down. Blade length itself is three and a half inches, and right there at the tip of the hinge, it is three and a half inches. The cutting edge is 3.125. Uh, that's one thing we're gonna get to it real quick is this nice uh, finger choil slash sharpening choil in there. Your blade cutting length is shortened up to 3.125 inches. Blade width is saying one inch right here, and then the thickness is just coming in at 0.12 inches. Look at that blade stock. She is thin. This is not going to be a pry bar for you guys, all right? Let's take a look at it on the bottom side. She is nice and thin, slicey type blade. And here's a satin finish. It is satin, but it is also a little a little shiny, a little reflective, even in, in standard lighting conditions without studio lights on it. It is a little bright and reflective. The handle length is 4.6 inches, gents. The handle width is 0.875. Handle thickness is 0.51 inch, so just over half an inch. So this is an awesome liner lock, dude. Stainless steel liners, skeletonized. Let's see if we can't see in there. We're probably not going to see in there. I don't know if you can see or not. Uh, hard to tell. But they are skeletonized, and they are coated, and in pretty cool blue. Liner locks come with uh, blue coating. The Praxis, which I have here, and we'll compare in a minute, has a gold coating and the Naja also has gold coating. And I went with the Olive Drab G10 scales. And if you can see, you got two holes right here, gents. That is for your reversible pocket clip. So it's left hand or right hand tip up carry. Pocket clip is a nice little skeletonized metal pocket clip. Nice, slides into the pocket nice and easy. Uh, it is tipped up just a little bit in the front. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't see a problem with this pocket clip. I don't typically have problems with pocket clips. And it is a deep carry pocket clip. So it does get you nice down deep in your pocket. And as you can see, you have a lanyard hole. Tube through, you got your backspacer here, which is a G10 backspacer, right? So your lanyard hole is tubed, I guess you would call it. As you can see right here, you do have a nice big flipper. You have jimping on the flipper tab itself up there. Uh, just a word of caution when you first get it, and still to this day, it is a little sharp on the end. So if you're getting this for a fidget knife, dudes, you will, uh, you, I don't, can you see it? There's probably too much light, too much exposure. Uh, you will callous your fingertip over flipping this thing. And it is going to be stupid tight when you get it. You're going to take it apart, put it back together, give it a little bit of oil. It came oiled, but I always put, uh, I always, this is like my fourth knife. I just go ahead and put a little bit of DLP. Yeah, go ahead and dog me because I'm not using nano oil. 
Anyways, just put a little bit in there, loosens her up, and break in that detent. She will be stiff. She will be a little, a little hard to get out, right? But speaking of jimping on the flipper tab and it being a little sharp, you do have jimping on the top of your blade that most of you have already seen. Goes hand in hand with this beautiful finger choil up here. You can get a nice choked up grip on it to do some slicing should you need to do so. Also offers you a good standoff for sharpening. But when you get that grip on there, gents, it is nice. Even when you come back, it is still a nice, good four finger grip, right? I got large hands, fits me decently good. Speaking of large hands, I know by just by looking at this, it is hard to tell. So we're gonna compare some sizes with some other hopefully known knives, right? So here's the Praxis. We'll put the Praxis right above it. Same size handles on both of them. So if you own a Praxis, same size handle. Basically just different color liner, different shape of the handle, and different shape blade. Same steels and everything. We have the Kershaw Dividend right there. Let's take away the Praxis. ZT0450CF. You can see it is a much smaller knife. So if you own this one and your pinky hangs off the back on the on the backlash, it will not hang off the back. Let's go ahead and get the dividend out of there. And we'll put a much larger knife next to it to show that it isn't all that big. It's actually a really good pocket knife size. But the ZT0452CF, you can see just demolishes everything else in size. I'm currently looking at some Wii's and some uh, uh, Kaisers. Sorry for the brain fart. Don't have my coffee with me. Those of you that are subscribers, you notice something was a little unusual with the intro. No coffee. Yeah, it's like 12 o'clock, so I'm trying to roll without coffee. But why did I get this? I'm looking at Wii knives. They're really, really, really expensive. Uh, I was looking at some Kaisers. Some great Kaisers out there. Some nice Vanguard series of Kaiser. And then I come across this, did a little bit of research on the company, and I seen a few good reviews, and I was like, $42.50, 100% worth a try. All right? Those skeletonized liners in there really lighten this thing up. It is not heavy at all, and I believe it's like 3 ounces, 3.8 ounces, somewhere around there. Very light knife. Extremely light, actually. And it does go down, but you have to, uh, you know, it's not false shutty. The blade is really light. In fact, speaking of the blade, once again, you're not going to be able to tell it very much with this camera angle, but this blade right here, this knife, is the first knife I tried out on the KME sharpening system that I just got. Eh, I did alright. It was a little noob. I did alright. It was a little bit noobish. Noobish sharpening, since I am so new to knives. I don't know if she's sharp or not. Oh yeah, she's sharp. She's sharp. I can't get the angle right in here. Uh, and keep it in frame. She is sharp, uh, but she does need a little bit more. <laughs> she needs a little bit more going into her. I'm going to get better on the KME, and we will get a mirror going on this mirror-ish satin blade. All in all, dudes, this knife is awesome. I cannot uh, recommend it enough for EDC carry, pocket carry work. Uh, just know that you, you know, with the, with the blade thickness on this joker, you're not going to be wanting to pry anything with it. Uh, with that 9CR18 MOV steel, I don't know how good it is with prying. You, you will more than likely bend it, right? But if you have a job where you got to cut a lot of stuff, skin wire, all kinds of stuff like that, self-defense, I mean, look at that blade. Who wouldn't want to defend themselves? Slicing, cutting your spear, whatever they call it nowadays, because even camping has to have... Uh, tactical terms now I guess but there you go awesome freaking knife dudes again I can't recommend it enough I like it I like it and I'm not so good with flipping them on the left hand and she does she flips just fine can it be failed obviously yes it can it's it's uh she still almost wanted to open but to get it to fail I gotta like choke up on it and just apply pressure until it comes off all right Oh, one last thing, dudes. There is jimping on the liner lock itself. Hopefully that's showing up in the camera. That, to me, when I first got it, was a little sharp, all right? It gave me a little bit of irritation on my thumb, but that's because 
I'm a fidget flipper kind of person, so I do it all the time. But once she's loosened up, like I said, took her part, oiled her, she is great. If you guys have any questions about this awesome little knife, I know you're just sitting here watching me flip it, right? I just can't stop flipping it. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. I actually carry it to work. It's 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 a cross between these two that I carry to work every day. Um, and I use both of them. This one isn't getting really, not a whole lot of scratches on it. My ZT pocket clip is obviously uh, removing the paint from itself. Um, man, it's a tie. Uh, I do know since this one was budget and it was only $42.50 that I would be more apt to pull this out and to cut in some nasty stuff than I would this. But again, I, I got this one to, to use. So I don't know. It's whatever mood I am in the morning is one of these two go on my pocket. All right, dudes, we've been talking long enough. Let's go back up top and close this video out. So there you have it, dudes. A nice little budget Civivi pocket knife. Look at that. Left-handed, my flipping skills suck, and I still flip her just fine. $42.50, awesome little knife. If you're not a, a steel snob, this is for you. Uh, yeah, it's just awesome. And it screams, use me, and I do. So there it is in a nutshell, the Civivi Backlash. Once again, dudes, I appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. If you like the knife videos, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to support the channel, click on one of my affiliate links in the description below. Helps me out. Helps me get more bullets for more pow pow pew pew for you and me. And now, since I'm addicted to knives, it may help get more knives. Alright dudes, see you in the next video.